Do you remember that scene in Goodwill Hunting where it was sort of a test of wills? Uh, Robin Williams is the therapist. Matt Damon is the uh, reluctant genius. And they're just sitting in therapy before Matt Damon has committed to trust or therapy. And Matt Damon is just remaining silent, testing Robin Williams, forcing Robin Williams to speak first. And Robin Williams will not speak first. This is where I am with Mike Ryan. Mike Ryan says he needs an apology. He will never get one from me on this subject. Mm. So we're at a bit of uh, loggerheads because he's just like, apologize. And I'll come back and do the show and I'll edit the Iron Sheik and make sure we all don't get fired. And I'm like, no, I'm not apologizing to you because what? What do I need to apologize for? Pointing out again and again that he's been obnoxious? I didn't need to point it out. He's been crazed. If, if he had come outside with Taylor and and uh, and Coogs and me, he would have gotten his apology. It was, I mean, I didn't apologize you to sure you. Did, Dan. I, it's you, okay, man. I, okay. I know you're pro. You, look, guys, for the cameras. Oh, you didn't apologize. That's right. My fault, Dan. Wink, wink. Yeah, I, I, you got to protect his pride. You know, he's got. He's got. He, look, when you're in that position, the position that Dan is in, you have to project like power and like iron fist. So every time we do things, guys, that, that kind of break that, it kind of it diminishes his power. That's my fault. You didn't apologize, Dan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for insinuating that you did apologize. Thank you for protecting me, Amin. I, I got you and back. my fragile ego. Uh, there are a number of basketball things that I want to get to, and we're not even going to do Heat, get Lillard, and Beal, and Kyrie, and James Harden, and Zion. Giannis and Embiid. And, yeah, Giannis and Embiid, too. Yeah. And Jokic. Jokic will, all of a sudden, Heat culture, want to go to work. All for Caleb Martin. Do you guys realize, like, you have become New York, right? Everything that you make fun of about New yeah. York, you, that's a, what... Th this part's obnoxious, but these are not the things. I, I want to talk about other basketball things. Mm -hmm. John Morant among them. James Harden, betting favorite is Houston. Your thoughts are what there? You think James Harden leaves Philadelphia to just go back to the comforts of strip clubs and they love me there and it wasn't a headache? I think there is a strong chance that James Harden relocates to Phoenix. Uh, he's, he's one of the few NBA s stars who lives in Phoenix in the offseason. Um, he goes back every off season. He he did it at a time when no one was doing that, and now there's like a little bit of a, you know, pro am pickup run that happens in Phoenix with because, Durant again. Because they're friends, Dan. They're friends, and and Chris Paul's done, and they need someone to fill that role. I haven't heard this though. I've been hearing again and again. Houston, either Philadelphia, or Houston. Houston, Houston's the one that everyone hears because obviously. You know, he, he had his best years there, and there's a comfort level there. But I think James wants to win. Like, I mean, going to Houston means I'm that's it. I'm just going to play the way I want to play and have fun off the court. But I'll be forgotten, and I'll be thought of as a guy, like a loser pretty much. I think Phoenix offers him the lifestyle stuff that he doesn't get in Philly. Right? He still has that kind of – maybe it's not to Houston levels in Phoenix, but he's a big deal out there. People remember him from Arizona State. And as I said, he's a guy that goes back every year, every summer. So he's plugged in into the, the local area. It's, again, one of those situations where the pressure's not on him because it's Book and it's KD. He plays with – like, again, him and KD are friends. Like, that didn't end sourly for them in Brooklyn. And then finally, I think – Look, he gets to play not only fill a role that they need in terms of a, a playmaker, but also I think there's going to be more opportunities for him to be offensively dominant like he used to be as opposed to in uh, in Philly where Doc wanted him to play a, a specific style, which maybe isn't the most uh, comfortable for him. John Morant, you're hearing what about how long his suspension is going to be? So this is one of my favorite things. This is a, a topic, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that's existed since game one of the NBA Finals. Because, Dan, you're not alone. A lot of aggregators heard Adam Silver's comments and surmised that, oh, it's known, but everyone's keeping it a secret. It's not known. What he said was, I, we, I know what, what we've gotten all the information. We know what we're going to do. We're not going to release it until after the finals because it's not fair to the teams participating. And he said, and the Players Association agree. And people thought that meant the Players Association knew the suspension. 
No, no, no. They, that's what I assume. That's what you, you're not alone. A lot of people assume that. The Players Association know that the announcement won't happen during the finals. They agreed, hey, okay, you made your decision, cool. We don't have to have it released right now, especially considering the Grizzlies already took punitive measures in the meanwhile. So it's not like you have to stop him from doing something in the meantime. Everyone ran with that, like, it's known. And uh, no, nobody, I, I, it's uh, my understanding that the only people who know are Adam Silver and I believe Joe Dumars and Mark Tatum. Like, th- and I don't even know if Ja, Ja probably doesn't know at all either. So I think those are the three people in the world who know. That's why it's not out. That's why it's not because Chris Haynes and, and Mark Spears and Mark Stein and all, all these shams, they're not like No, I got it. it wrong. I got it wrong. Yeah. If you're telling me, I, I interpreted Adam Silver saying we've, made, we've come to an agreement with uh, the Players Association because they're walking through the collective bargaining agreement, and I don't know what Silver's powers are here, especially as John Morant now claims that it was a toy gun, which is what Ethan Strauss yes. suggested that PR should have him come – uh, allege the first week he waited yes. very long too late yeah. to say toy gun so everybody started laughing about that I, I, I part of this story that I'm enjoying though is Skip Bayless trying to get John Morant and Lil Wayne together and failing to do so Lil Wayne going to Skip Bayless as an intermediary to try and reach John Morant but John Morant's people are not getting back to Lil Wayne Jaw's gone too far here Dan the gun stuff hey look it happens to the best of us Things happen, right? It does. It, it happens to the best of us. Does it? It does. I don't feel not any of us, us but the, the best, best of us. We're not. We're not. We're the not best the best of us. us so. We're the worst of us. Yeah. But I don't the best feel, of us. I don't feel happen. like this. I don't feel like I've ever before heard. Let of him a, cook, Dan. Okay. I want to see where he's oh, going with this. Dan. My fault. But the fact that one of rap's legends, okay, one of rap's goats on the ra- the Mount Rushmore of rap, has reached out. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Weezy F, baby, and the F is for fill in the blank, whatever you'd like there. Hmm. The fact that he has gone through the same thing. Right, he he spent time in Rikers Island for gun charges, mm-hmm. and he's reaching out to Ja, and then Ja just left him on red. He's gone too far. So, so, so watch this counterpoint. Wayne messed up. You want to get to Ja Morant, and you went to skip freaking Bayless. That's that's also your true. conduit. All the people in sports media, all the people in sports. That's the guy you picked. Does, I get it. You did the theme song for their silly little show, which is gonna collapse now. The my guy Shannon is gone, but uh, like had to add your guy there. Yeah, it's my guy, man. It's my guy. It's my dude. So you don't think Wayne has enough clout to just go directly to Ja? I, I, I don't think he even knows how. That's funny. It's weird that one would say that, but yeah, I don't think he he knew how. And so he's like, well, I'll go through Skip because he has a relationship with Skip. But like, that's not who I would go for. He's probably changed numbers, right? I'm, John, I'm gonna tell you right now, months. Wayne, hit me up. Hmm. You want to connect with Jaw? So you. that's what this is about. No, I'm just saying. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm offering, I'm offering to Wayne. So you've got Lil Wayne just sitting around listening to this pot, just sitting around. Well, somebody may have sent it to him, Dan. This is a very viral show. It Dude, goes on on social millions media. of downloads. Exactly. One of them can't be Lil Wayne. One, just one download can't be Lil Wayne. Come on, man. Did you say little. I said Lil Wayne. The Wayne. Just making sure. Little Wayne. Why are you doing that? Weezy F. Got, there's an apostrophe in there. You've got you to say it correctly. Is that witty? 50 cent. <laughs> Do we have uh, – can video get ready for me? Uh, because one of the things that Chris Cody was doing while reporting the Panthers was noticing what was happening with a PR guy behind uh, Porter in the Denver locker room as they celebrated a championship. Uh, Porter, after game – I think it was game three of the final. When did I see him? No, game four of the final – in Miami, looked totally haunted, shell-shocked, because he was playing so He was so bad in the first four games, benched at one point for Bruce Brown, so bad that he looked embarrassed while meeting with his family after game four of the finals. In a way, I'm not used to seeing an NBA starter look, where he didn't want to be seen. He knew, with all those lights, that all his jumpers were short. Every one of them, and he looked awful. But he's a champion. And he's a champion because they've got a guy in the middle who doesn't want to go to work. I didn't know that every person from the organization just gets to let go after the game. Yeah, it's it was great. I, mean, I that, love this clip. Did you see? Did you see, like? Was that the scene in Vegas? Did you see a guy see that? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't in the locker room, mm. 
but like you know, I was just doing Vegas. That's but, yeah, yeah you, you were. I, we'll get to that in a second because. But he, we have to celebrate this PR yeah, guy. Yes. Because I want to know here when we dissect this video, is he intending to spit out the champagne right away? So he takes a swig behind Michael Porter Jr. Mm -hmm. and it just instantly throws up like foam <laughs> in the mouth. Like it did foam. It like, looked like he'd been it, like he'd been poisoned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that zoom is crucial. And he kind of does a look around like, did anyone catch that? <laughs> yeah, that's not purposeful. There's no way that's purposeful. <laughs> okay, it looks like he is foaming at the mouth as if he had been, uh, you know, bitten by some sort of snake. There are like 20 snakes. I've never seen that much foam in somebody's is mouth. Is that like his second bottle of champagne? And he's just like, oh, man. I've seen dogs have that come out of their mouth when they bite the wrong kind of toad. <laughs> I can't go to this unedited Iron Sheik stuff without Mike Ryan being here to make sure that the Iron Sheik didn't say anything deeply offensive that's going to get us all canceled. But we're in a stare down right now, and Mike Ryan refuses to come in here. He's sitting in the other room. He's working for Metal Arc, but he has not participated in the show. I'm told he released a statement. We'll get to that in just a second. We also have a parade of gas bags that I need to and want to get to. But before we do all of that, I just have to get to this Larsa Pippen. We have not talked about this at all. The ex-wife of Scottie Pippen, who has been dating for a while now, Michael Jordan's son. And uh, I don't know if this informs how poisonously Pippen is now talking about Michael Jordan in public, sounding very bitter. But uh, Larsa Pippen, thank you. I mean, I appreciate all of your whistling commentary here. But now are Larsa Pippen and Michael Jordan's son beyond dating? And Michael Jordan's son is, I don't know how many years, her junior. But beyond dating, they're now starting a podcast together? Because initially they were denying TMZ. They were seen all over Miami, seeming like they were dating. They denied it. Larsa Pippen has managed, through Housewives and other ventures, to keep her. She's an influencer. She is somebody who has kept her, her fame and relevance late in the life of Scottie Pippen, even more than Scottie Pippen, correct? Because Pippen these days trends only when he says the awful things about Michael Jordan. But right now, Larsa Pippen is more famous than, or more relevant at this moment than Scottie Pippen is, correct? Yeah, I would say that. She's, she's definitely hitting the Q rating a little harder than Scottie. And I think you're accurate. Scottie now is only known when he says stuff about Michael Jordan that sound patently ridiculous, like he was a bad player before I Horrible, he said. I mean, like, it just... It, <laughs> yeah. I, it, it's just one of those things. Like, Scott, I get what you're... I get your overall sentiment that, hey, Michael needed me, but come on, man. Larry Bird said that wasn't Michael Jordan, that was God in sneakers. When the guy was a rookie, dude. Like, 63 points in a loss. Larry still, Bird said that was God. The part that's weird, and, it, and you can tell there's just so much resentment there it's that nobody it's not like people don't give scotty his flowers isn't he thought of as like a top defender of all time everybody speaks of him as top like, 50 of all time you gotta find yourself a pippin like he gets thought of as this great two, number two guy i think chris to be honest with you and dan this might come as a, as a surprise i don't think it's the larsa pippin stuff that's making scotty do all this stuff this all started with the last dance because Scotty came off looking not so great, as did almost everybody who would not name Michael Jordan, looked not so great in that. And I think he, that hurt his feelings, and he's been on that rampage before, because I worked with Scotty on the jump, and he would always, like, he would say, Look at me, <laughs> He'd always talk about how Michael Jordan was the greatest. And then every once in a while he would say, like, LeBron's the greatest. But it was never, it, like, he, oh, he played both sides, yes, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I think Scotty liked the idea that people compare <laughs> LeBron to him, right? Like Le LeBron is more like Scotty in terms of being an all-round player and all that. And so there was a little bit of like, yeah, I think LeBron's the best. But then he'd come back the next day and say, no, no, Michael was the best. So it was always a back and forth there, but never, never vitriol and never dismissive of anything. All that started after the last dance. I think we're missing the point here, though. Mm-hmm. Larsa and Marcus Jordan have started a podcast. That's how you know it's real. What's the what's the name of this podcast? Oh man, I'm glad. Pippin and Jordan. <laughs> God 
dude. Wow. That's an wow. awesome. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself a round of applause, Chris Cody. Yeah. No, 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 I, I, it's okay. Yeah. You don't need to stop doing your job to give yourself a round of applause there. We could just keep doing your job. Their their podcast is called Separation Anxiety with Larsa and Marcus. That's a stupid what name. What does that even mean? It's stupid name. Terrible name. Dumb. They didn't even use the last names? So this is this is from People magazine, this excerpt. Larsa, 48, who was previously married to NBA legend Scottie Pippen, the former Chicago Bulls teammate of Marcus's dad, explained how she hid her connection with Marcus, 32, for some time. After meeting at a party four years ago, Larsa saved Marcus's phone number under a fake name, Mark Jacobs. <laughs> and my- former, former Marlins first baseman. <laughs> Mike Jacobs, that's a fine. Oh. Mike. Oh, Mark Jacobs is in like fashion, right? Designer, yeah, fashion designer. Which, yeah. which I said then in my group chat, I said that's like calling your porn folder "nothing to see here." <laughs> <laughs> Very underrated. Yesterday was a mean starting a sentence with the question. You know what I like about Japanese porn? That was something that happened on yesterday. Are you going to say Mike Jacobs is a slugger? I didn't say that. That was Brockmeyer who said that. Let's. I, I that was that's another fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was Brockmeyer. It was Brockmeyer who said that. Let's. Uh, you think I? I was talking about what you said at, off air. Oh, can, can, that's what I was apologizing Before to I you for. Apology. <laughs> In, incidentally, I do owe another apology. It is not going to Mike Ryan, who oh. has released a statement, and we're going to get to that in a second. Uh, but I owe an apology to the insiders who I thought were bought and paid for on that John Morant story because I said if the commissioner knows and the Players Association knows, then you cannot embargo that news. The insiders have to go and get that news. So thank you for the correction. And yeah. I apolo- I'll, ap- I'll apologize to all of them, Shams and Woj and all of them. It's I, okay. I got that <laughs> I got that wrong. But let's find out here because I'm, I am actually curious what this Mike Ryan statement from the penalty box is. He's been there for two Two hours. He refuses to speak on the show, but he has released a statement. I can't read it from here with my glasses. I mean, what does it say? All right. <clears throat> Five dollars. No, I'm just okay. He was getting ready to read yeah, that. That's just, what you that do. Was, that was, that was yeah, for, you for effect. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Privately, I know I'm valued by Dan and Meadowlark. Though Meadowlark has broken some promises and is two full pay cycles late on an invoice. However, I'm sick of constantly being positioned as annoying. It created a narrative that I can't break. It's a lazy default by a quickly diminishing talent. (laughs) By my standards, I was rational, practical, and even keeled this postseason run. I'm consistently the most prepared, clever, and essential professional on the show. Oh, clever. I I would like to be treated as such on the air and by those supposed fans that have no idea what it is I do. I've made tremendous sacrifices, both personally and professionally, to guide two deteriorating hosts through the (laughs) dwindling twilight of their careers. He is right, though. Uh, (laughs) Roy, Roy, go sit with him. Oh, I'll I'll gladly join him. Go sit. I'll gladly join him. Another protest. Uh, you know what? If you're so glad to join him in that Panthers jersey that is long sleeved, go outside, walk across Whoa. the street, go be in the heat. Uh, no, not interested in hearing from you again. No, nope. no, 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 not, no, 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 not in this hockey. No, I refuse to do that. No, 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 no. no. Roy, That's get outside. I was not asking, no. Roy. You're not asking, Roy. That was not a request. No, no. he's wearing a hockey jersey. Dan, send him the penalty box. It's only fair. Go, it's only fitting. No. I'm no. not asking. What do you mean? What do you mean? What's HR. HR. Roy, we don't have an HR department. Get the. Get out of here God right damn now! Damn it. Why? Get out of here! Get out of the- Across ah. the street and sit in the median! Sit in the median! Get out! You Roy, give me a rest Get day. out! Get out! God Almighty, you gotta be sh- me! You just drank in Vegas on the company expense account. You're not gonna refuse to leave the room! Out! The company's going to come up, uh, come apart here. This is where it's going to happen. <laughs> Don't worry, Dan. You got us. I can't kick enough people out of here. I'm gonna By the end of the show, Dude, I'm going to be just sitting be here you. by myself, just blubbering in tears. Lewis said in my ear, does Dan want me in there? Just, no? <laughs> uh, just bleep it. Play the Iron Sheik sound. Just find the Iron Sheik sound. I don't know that it's edited. Uh, we don't have time for this. We'll do it next How about segment. the parade of gas bags? Play the parade of gas bags as, I try, as, I, as I try to get control of our company that's falling apart in front of everybody. We are not accustomed 
to watching Nikola Jokic be the best player in the NBA because this guy is never the best player in the NBA. He's not. It's a garbage game. Oh, the Nuggets are going to win. Oh, Denver, the altitude. And you know what? The Heat are going to win it all. The difference in the game is they can withstand the Zeller minutes. You should have heard how Greg Cody and Stugatz were talking about Jokic. They said bad for the game. He is. He's boring. If you asked NBA executives of who they would rather have in the NBA Finals, Jokic, Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, they're all going to tell you Durant, Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Kyrie Irving, anyone but Jokic. Go back to the big three era. Look at what Jimmy Butler has done for these last four years. Take Jimmy Butler's performance in the last four years, insert him for LeBron James. Do the Heat win less championships? Do they win more championships? Because that guy's not losing to J.J. Barea. My wife Damn asked it. who the Heat are facing in the NBA Finals. I said, that guy I showed you on TV a couple of weeks, the best player in the NBA, she said Heat in four. The Zeller minutes are amazing. Yeah. They're a joy to watch. Could they have won more <laughs> if this version of Jimmy Butler had been there instead of LeBron? Because what he is doing is simply unmatched. Oh, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> During the segment, Jeremy said, I made out like a bandit. They didn't use any of my stuff. He looks physically sick.